Yeah, so let's look at uh, this case right here. It's a 71-year-old uh, patient who's got, he's phakic. He's got early cataracts that are starting to impact his vision and something that, that will, of course, be very familiar to, to the doctors here. Uh, and interestingly, it, it, there's definitely a visually significant cataract, but the patient was kind of ambivalent about the surgery, wasn't quite sure whether they wanted it or not. Uh, and on the previous visit, as, as a lot of us doctors can get busy, we come in, the glaucoma seems okay, and there's no discussion of MIGS, right? And, um, and so really what I'm getting at is, you, just like Deb talked about is get to know your patient or even at least have the technician start asking the right questions. And so when the patient came in for a, a typical glaucoma checkup, you know, I looked at their uh, history of present illness and, and they said they only use their drops 60 to 70 percent of the time. And that to me is a red flag. You know, even if you have stable testing, as soon as your compliance starts to drop, your risk of progression in the future goes up. So you, you see here the testing, there's legit disease, this is real glaucoma. I don't want this to get worse, right? I don't want to be reactive here. The patient's not a great medication candidate. There's ganglion cell damage, there's inferior arcuate on the visual field. And my, you know, my job is to figure out what, what is best for that patient. Anything less than 100% compliance to me is at risk of, of disease progression. That's shown in many studies. You really need up to almost 90 to 90, 99 to 100% compliance. So, so let's delve further, right? Talk to your patient. It's not just about in and out. It's how really are you doing? Why are you forgetting? And as you get to know your patient and, and realize drops are a burden, that's when you as the doctor can become their friend, their, 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 their helper, their, their partner in, in their disease journey. So essentially, I, I knew that this was a patient that needed MIGS, right? And had he, had he been standalone or, or pseudophagic, um, I would have done pseudophagic. But he happened to be faking. Now here's what's crazy, right? He was ambivalent about cataract surgery despite having cataracts. And as soon as I gave him the option of MIGS, discussed the benefits of canaloplasty with trabeculotomy that may reduce his need for medications, he was on board. And he's like, yeah, take the cataract out while you're there. Now look at that. You know, I wanted to do cataract surgery. He wasn't sure. I offered, well, well let's take care of the glaucoma. Maybe get rid of your medicines. And that's somebody that went, well, let's do it. And so what I find is, is, is something that happens is patients who are not fully compliant, they're miserable. They don't want to be using that drop. And they almost self-select to be your MIGS candidates. So you see anybody with poor compliance, they're going to be much more on board with MIGS than, than somebody who's 100% compliant. Do you guys find that absolutely. to be true? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And they're excited. Right, right. <laughs> they're they so are. excited. They are. They're like, let's do it. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and you're like, wow. You know, I mean, like, this is amazing. So, so that's the surgical plan, cataract surgery uh, with, with canal plastic trabeculotomy using the Omni de device. And, um, and essentially, here's a, a, a surgical video. Uh, this is with the Omni Edge. So there's going to be more viscoelastic delivery. It's going to be a little different of a view. This is a direct gonio prism that I'm using, so instead of turning the head. But uh, as you can see here, like he talked about, the tip of the cannula is amazing. I mean, it just penetrates the canal so smoothly. And you're seeing that, that blue catheter go around. And now as I'm retracting it, uh, it, you know, the canal starts to stretch and dilate even more than with the ergo. And, and that's really nice to see. And once I'm done with the canaloplasty, I'm now ready for my trabeculotomy, and I uh, incise and open that, unroof that trabecular meshwork. So a very, very suave, very smooth type of procedure. Now in his mild eye, I, I, I did, you know, one, one, one quadrant to one hemisphere, but in the more moderate eye, I decided I'm going to tailor it to, to the needs of the, to the disease and essentially performed more treatment. And that's, again, the, the beauty of the procedure.